Finished up fifth place. Um, improvement off of, of last year's mark. How are you feeling about it? Uh, I'm excited. Well, a little excited. More disappointed, I think, initially. Uh, I think after having some time to think about it, step back and talk with Jerry about it, I'll be much more excited. But I'm definitely disappointed right now. I definitely I'm in so much better fitness right now than I was last year. Um, and I think I showed that being able to close decently well in a faster pace race. Um, it's probably what I'm most excited about. But same thing as last year, I I gave myself that that chance and the, the hope that I could possibly medal and I shut out again so it's a little disappointing. But it's nice to uh, improve on where I was last year and just get a little bit closer. Yeah, I mean, it's a little baby step, I guess. You you're finished higher end, you know, you're there, what, 200 to go pretty much? You're still there? Yeah, yeah, I was there uh, 200 to go. Um, they pulled away. I, I could definitely tell Coach was fading a little bit. Uh, he wasn't going to be able to finish in the top three today. And I think I kind of just kind of eased off the pace a little bit and sat on him, hoping to pass him in the home stretch and then a miracle work in my favor and someone fade in the final 100 meters or trip up or something. I don't know. Um, just leaving myself that opportunity. Uh, and coach just barely held me off. So It sounds like there's a little contradiction almost because the other day you said I just want to improve on last year and I'm not, I don't want to say I want to medal but now that you've missed it, yeah. you're frustrated. Well, yeah, I mean, I was there with 400 meters to go, and I, I mean, the top five of us were all within two or three steps of each other, um, which is this, it's the same scenario as it was last year, but much different race, uh, obviously. Um, and, like, you, there's just so many emotions going through you, uh, especially when you have a chance to medal with a lap to go, so I, the bar was like automatically set for top three in that scenario, and when you come away empty-handed again, it's it's tough, but like I said, like, give, give me a little bit of time and I'll definitely be able to step away and be very happy with where I'm at. It seemed like on the back stretch there was probably a 50 meter span where you just let the gap open up just yeah. a couple steps. What what happened there? Um, I kind of played the scenario out in my head a, multiple times throughout the last week where I thought that there was a pretty good possibility that the race was going to go out relatively fast with there being four Kenyans um, working together, stringing it out. and. Uh, giving themselves a chance to uh, sweep the medals. So the way that it played out in my mind was I would sit in fifth place, um, <coughs> kind of let, it, if it was a hot pace and they took off um, as fast as they normally, as fast as Kenboy normally does on the last 300. Um, I didn't like. I didn't think I was going to be able to close in 56 off the fast pace this year. But if I was able to just stay in contact with them the slightest bit and hope for some of those guys to die off and fade back to me, I'd have a really good opportunity to pass in the last 100 meters if I really um, kept my emotions and my running under control and gave myself a little bit of energy in the last 100 meters. Like I was hoping that I could possibly nip them after that last barrier, but um, the top three were definitely stronger than I was today, and Coach just barely <laughs> held me off, which I'm pissed about, but um, I was right there. So. I mean, in retrospect, you think maybe you should have just tried to stay with him as long as possible on that last lap? Maybe mentally that would have... Uh, no. I don't know. I I don't think I... I think I probably would have gotten to the water barrier 
and been even more exhausted than I was. And probably had a probably I probably would have had a really rough water barrier and gotten past my coach anyways if I had really thrown myself 100% out there on that back stretch. Um, and I probably would have been more pissed if I had gotten past like repassed by him in the home stretch than giving myself a chance to pass him in the last 100 meters. So if the same if it would have turned out the same way with the fifth place. I think I might have been a little bit more happy with it this way. Right, makes sense. Never know. What, how, how comfortable do you, do you feel in this event now, only your second year? I mean, do you feel like you're, you know, you look at a guy like Koesh and he's been doing it for years and has run unbelievable times every year and you're, like I said, second year. Yeah, um, I, I'm definitely more comfortable than last year. Last year, Maybe it was it being the, the Olympics and not the World Championships. I definitely let my emotions get the best of me within the race. I was I was pressing in the pack the whole time. I was constantly trying to be on people's shoulders. And I think this time around, I was way more confident in myself to put myself on the rail and just keep myself in contention with the top five places and just stay relaxed. Uh, I definitely would not have been able to do that last year. I wasn't comfortable enough to do that, wasn't confident enough to do that, so uh, it's definitely a step in the right direction uh, this year. But obviously, fifth place is not a medal, so there's there's more work to do. I mean, earlier this year, I think you said you needed to close in 57 to try to get a medal. And Robert was trying to convert because it was an outside water jump, but he, somehow he's like, oh, I think he closed about 59, the equivalent. 59? Yeah, I mean, it was 62 or something, but he, somehow he tried to... Okay. He used to coach. I don't know how yeah, he did yeah. it. I mean, what do you, you... You lower the gap a little bit from last year, but what do you think... I mean, how'd you do that, and what do you think you need to do to kind of just get the... I mean, it's not very much time that you need. I mean, you're 0.8 for a medal today. Yeah. Was I? I think last year, you're, yeah, last you year, know how close it was, yeah. I mean, last year you were thinking about four seconds, right? Yeah, I think I was five seconds away from first, and uh, second and third were two. I, I might have been two or three seconds off of third last year. Uh, if you want to know, gold was a second and a half away. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Today? I think so. Uh, um, sorry, what was the question? How do you? What'd you do to kind of close the gap a little bit? What do you think you need to do to? I mean, it's a fine line, right? You guys all run around, and we kind of yeah. we uh, don't know what the lap to go. These five guys are going to be there, and it all determines. It's just such a little bitty difference, yeah. but it kind of plays out how you. Most people probably would have said Evan will probably just miss the medals. Yeah, uh, but I, we can see the progress. Yeah, I think a big part of the the progress from last year to this year was just getting stronger. Um, Last year, I only had one full, completely healthy year of training going into the Olympics. I've got two this year, and I've closed the gap along with being more comfortable with the event. Um, but I think, I don't know, maybe positioning with a lap to go would have helped if I didn't have to worry about passing Coach in the last lap. That probably would have helped uh, if I if I had put myself in fourth and made him try and pass me in the last 400 meters. Uh, I might have been able to hold him off, but uh, I don't know. Just everything. I think just staying healthy, getting stronger, and uh, I definitely learned a lot. Uh, it's more comfortable with the event this year, but. I think next year, being an off year, we're really going to hit the Diamond League steeples a lot and race these guys a lot more often, probably five or seven times throughout the year. So that I think that'll help a lot. It'll be good going into the next World Champs. And talk about the nice about the training things. situation a little bit. Yeah. I mean, when you started out, you know, like Matt and Chris were kind of the alpha dogs in the group, and now they're been hurt, kind of moving on to the roads a bit, maybe they'll come back to the track, but it's, you know, you got Dan with you now and some of the other guys who didn't make it, but... Yeah. I mean, it's it's different. It's a lot... The team feels a lot younger. Um, I, I can't 
came in and I was definitely the baby of the group. Uh, I was four years younger than the next oldest guy, but the next youngest guy. Um, and now I, I, I've got three guys that I live with that are all the same age or younger than me. So uh, it, it's definitely a different mentality uh, coming into training. I'm no longer being taught every every practice. Uh, I'm kind of doing it. We watched it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're watching the training group. Yeah, I was just saying it's it's weird not being the young guy and basically coming into practice every morning and being taught something, feeling like like I'm a student every day. Uh, I definitely feel like it's more of a balanced role in the group. I'm, I'm definitely still learning a lot of stuff, but I'm also, I feel like I'm one of the leaders when it comes to working out, and uh, it's it's definitely a, like a balanced situation. Um, and it's definitely weird, like, that all I knew was Matt and Chris being the older guys for the first four years, so, uh, yeah, it's definitely changing. I was just going to say, how was it bringing in some of these new guys in? Like, you guys all went with Jerry pretty much from Wisconsin and had that system beforehand. So as new guys filter in, how is that? They don't, they don't have the background in, in the system no, as much. Yeah, it's definitely, well, the system was completely changed once we moved to Portland. So, like, I had never done anything my first year at Wisconsin that we did my first year in Portland. It was completely different. And it was the same thing for Matt and Chris. Um, training philosophy almost completely changed. Um, so they were they were new to pretty much everything too, but uh, kind of going with what you said, there's definitely still an aura of Badger as the core of the group. Um, Jerry, obviously, is from Wisconsin. Pascal went to Wisconsin. And then... Uh, Three, four of the main guys that moved out to Portland when we started training out there are, are still in Portland training and still the core of the group. So it's definitely a very strong Badger feeling within the group, but uh, we're definitely getting a lot more other flavors added to this pot. So it's, it's really cool. It's really nice. All right.